it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. We're going to have a good show today. Some gremlin already ate the Y in my word mystery, so we decided to leave that for you. Uh, the opening shop came from our friend in Big Springs, Texas. And so thank you uh, for that. Before we get to our fun show here, I'd like to talk to you about a, a, a few things. First of all, I'd like to make you aware of that um, this, the, um, the episode Spook Lights of Joplin, Missouri um, is nominated at the EBE Awards um, at the International Film, Film Festival in Laughlin, Nevada. And so we're really excited about that. And if we win, um, we let you know. And even if we don't win, it, it, we agree it was a great show. The next thing, um, about two or three weeks ago, uh, I shared a story with you about Russell Jordan, the, the young man that got murdered in California in 1982. And they had just recently found uh, the man that, um, that committed this uh, crime. And at the time we filmed that, we didn't know the outcome of the trial. In the meantime, I'd like to give you an update. Um, Mr. Vivek uh, pre-bargained, and he got six years, which means he would actually be ready for parole um, in two and a half years. And that's kind of puzzling. But we're going to revisit that whole subject of Russell Jordan and um, his untimely death in California. The other thing is I found myself in the middle of a domestic, um, well, it wasn't a crisis, but it, it just, it, of a domestic situation. And being the HIM, I thought I was all done with that. Um, but as it turns out, things haven't really changed at all in the last 20 years. So I like for anyone out there that uh, find themselves in, uh, in a domestic situation and then uh, went to court and where the abuser used the legal system to continue the abuse. I'd like to hear from you. Uh, we need to visit that and uh, give some solution to the friends that are suffering. So if you give me a call about that before, um, actually after 12 noon, uh, just give me a call and I would like to do a show on that. There's that. And the last thing is, if you look at my hair, I have been to every beauty shop in this town and um, because of the way I like my haircut, I'm having a hard time. So I'm in dire need of a hairdresser that uh, would understand what I mean when I say, can you cut it like that? And so if you give me a call and I'll work out something with you, please universe I need a hairdresser okay so without any further delay we have a fun show we're going to Laughlin Nevada Clarence Moore um, and myself we went to the uh, Earth Mystery Conference uh, a couple of months ago and we just now get into it so we have a lot of fun for you uh, the first interview um, will be with a cryptozoologist Wow um, and his name is Lauren Coleman. And so we're just going to go right to sunny Nevada. And that's where we're going to take you. I think, wow, we got Fate Magazine behind me. Wonderful magazine. I'm, I'm reading a lot of things. And uh, actually, Lauren Coleman just wrote an article in there. So as soon as we set up, we're going to take you to the desert. And here we are. Do I have audio? Yeah, I need some audio. Do I? Very, very yeah, I think we need some audio here. Let me bring it in for you a little bit. It's so colorful. Now, keep in mind, what there is the helicopter? I'll wait. There it is. In mind, this is October already, and it's still beautiful, and everything is blooming. I have no idea what the name of these plants are, but they just look so beautiful and peaceful. And then here, you can see alone, palm tree. It goes quite a ways up. And here are more palm trees. 
It is actually a chemtrail free day today. What you see back here is smoke, not chemtrails. It's been smoking like that for a while. Here's some more of the And we are staying on the eighth floor of Harris. It was a wonderful trip. They have charter planes that you can go on to. They leave from Portland. They bring you all the way to Bullhead, Laughlin. Then buses will pick you up and bring you over here. When you get here, you are checked into your room. They give you a key. They deliver your luggage. And you can just enjoy whatever you want to do. It is just an awesome place. And then this is the hill. It's come off of coming in here. Then here's the desert. It's only about 100 degrees today. This is the current entertainment they have. A young man named Earl Turner. And here's the desert. And Lawson is right in this hole here. And it's quite an estate, actually. Now it is a casino, so we can't show you the inside, it's against the law, but we're not here to gamble. We are here to attend Jim Mars' conference, the Earth, Earth Mystery Conference. So we're just going to go inside and see what we have to offer. It's a smokestack, that's where that smoke is coming from. That's what it is. In the courtyard here. Well, in here it is cold. This is the vendor's hall. It is cold and it's lunchtime, so it's really rather quiet. These are some of the things you can purchase. Beautiful. Wow. It's a t shirt that blink. I've actually shown you this booth before when we were in um, in Laughlin the last time. They uh, had a booth there also. And this is the UFO Center. Here you have tapes you can purchase. And uh, here before long, you, you actually going to be able to purchase my tape from this company online and in in bookstores. The security that it provided was just exactly. Uh, here's some more categories. Things that are for sale. Then you have clothes. Just beautiful pieces. Look at this one. Just a beautiful garment. So me and my big mouth, I just interrupted the reading. Just show you some of these wonderful stones that's available here. Oh, there's a stone, like. I have one of those. Have you played enough? And more stones. And you've seen this one before. In fact, we used one of his cards as an opening shot. It is both here and then the gentleman here. Uh, that's Mr. Crawford. He's the person that sells you all the video tapes that I just showed you. And then here we have books. With all its personal. Some of them you recognize. Very good collection, actually. And then I think this is going to be my favorite. I've seen this lady before. She has the most beautiful clothes you've ever seen. And so I told her I was going to take a picture of them. And if you want to purchase some of those, um, it's, not, it's not a secret project. Call me and I will definitely give you her phone number. So let me show you something here. Calls. I'm going to bring them in closer. Pinks. 
in red. And it just goes on and on and on. And I've worn some shawls similar to these, but they didn't come from here. Just wonderful. The embroidery on this is just amazing. Have you ever seen anything that pretty before? Cool. I gotta show me another one. Oh, oh look yeah. at that one, huh? Yes. Isn't, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw some of the things last year, but uh -huh. but we didn't get a phone number, so we didn't know what to do. I will give you a phone number. Look at this one. This is like a Hawaiian goddess. Uh huh. Just beautiful. You need to pull it out so you can get a full effect on this. And, um, and then this is the lady. It's you. She's the lady that um, first time she was wearing these, first time I saw them, which was in February. Just one. They are somewhat affordable. Somewhat. Depending upon who you buy them from. Somewhat affordable, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's almost like a lot of the times, you know, back over here, a lot of the times they become one's trademark. And uh, no matter where you are in the world, you wear something like that and you have something in common and you'll say, oh, I know where you got that and I know where you've been. So it's like an identifying. Am I right? Yep. Yeah, that's what I think too. You are. If somebody saw this in London, they go, yeah, who'd you get that from? Uh -huh. And it'd probably be a name in common. In common, yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. It's a book, uh, River of Fear. And uh, so that's what you have available at the conference. And then this gentleman here. Which gentleman? This one there. Yeah, this one there. I'm going to go around and give you a frontal. So he's, we're going to talk about his radio show. And you, my dear, have an internet radio show, no? Right. DNA Live Radio, UFO Lab Radio. DNA Live Radio on Mondays and Fridays and every Wednesday. Information you cannot get anywhere else. UFO Lab Radio. 7 to 9 p.m. Mountain Time. DNA stands for Dennis and Anne, my wife. Well, we wouldn't have guessed that at all. We're not geneticists. What do you think of that? Oh, how genius. Dennis and Ed, that was Anne. That was your idea? Yes. How genius. Dennis and Ed. Yeah, yeah I, I saw your van. I That's said, all? oh, the DNA lab is here. Huh? And, uh, <laughs> you, and you usually think Daryl Sims is right behind you, you know? Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, right? I just spent some time with him a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, you were saying mm -hmm. that earlier, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but how ingenious. So we hope you can get Bob White to come I'm on. I'm going to try to give, I'm going to attempt to get Bob White on, definitely. Yeah, yes. very definitely, yeah. yeah. And I uh, want to get... With Stephen Bassett? Stephen Bassett. Right? Uh -huh. when, you rope, when you sit him down for an interview, uh -huh. I'm going to rope him and get his phone number. He's a wonderful person. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was telling Ann about it. Mm -hmm. Sounds very interesting from the political end of it, yeah. the Disclosure Project. So that should be very interesting. Yeah. You, you know, I always think that, uh, we mentioned that before, I feel like we need to pool all our resources, whether it's whatever it is, and kind of do it together because um, exactly. it doesn't matter how we get the message there along together. That's, we're all supposed to come together as one and get the message out, yeah. right? And so if I run into anyone else, I'll send them your way. All right, I'm going to take a picture of your table here. Okay. Um, and how's your hamper? Well, I'm going to hide me because I'm still... Please, from some of the shows. These are the speakers who uh, mm -hmm. are at the show here today, the conference. There's uh, Jim Mars, uh -huh. Lauren Coleman, John Alexander. Well, of course, you know Jim Mars, and you are familiar with Lynn Buchanan. And Irvin Schiff. I you don't have to pay taxes. Ah. 
Let's see, and Linda Morton Howell, Gail Ferguson. Dennis and Ann, that would be you. Right. Yeah, and... Uh, and we have one here from Scott Ritter, the former UN weapons inspector. That's what was complaining about the Iraqi war going to... Oh, uh, yeah, I, I'm too far away. What, what are you saying? This is, that is the, the weapons inspector. Now, hmm, I just mentioned him in reference to something, and I can't remember... <laughs> Can't remember. We just talked about that. He uh, was. It was. A, it was a great interview with Scott Ritter. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent interview. The man. He said long before we went into Iraq, mm -hmm. you will not find, find any, any weapons of mass destruction, yeah. and we haven't. Yeah. To this day. Yeah. So. And he was right, 100 percent. So. Mm -hmm. Now, Doctor. Uh, not Doctor. Mr. Stephen Bassett, the one we just discussed. We we arrived here the day the um, the space shuttle crashed. So to remind you, the war hadn't even started yet, and he estimated 100 billion dollars if we go ahead and do that. Now wasn't he close? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Most definitely. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm gonna swing about, huh? It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He kind of know what he was talking about there. Oh yeah. <laughs> And Jordan Maxwell, you, Jordan Maxwell is a television show? Uh, Jordan Maxwell is a television radio talk show host. Okay, is that quiet? Yeah, they did a, a private interview together, both of them. But they're very personal fr uh, good friends. And Mr. Stitchin does not. Now, can you imagine? The work that goes into bringing all this stuff from somewhere in Arizona. You just have walls and walls and walls of books. Here, for the friend. Which is really David Icke, but that's what some of you call him. There's a lot of books here. Um, Jim Mars's new book, The War on Freedom. And of course, here is the personal price range in the show wouldn't be complete without it. And it kind of concludes the vendor. And but this is the first day, so we'll see what else it brings us. And we'll have more interesting persons to talk to you. And then, of course, here's all the visit with the personal price range. Of course, everybody wanted to buy my ball. And here we are. <laughs> what we did is showing the show and uh, selling the tapes while we are here. Some of our tapes that were made for, in, for the internet. And yeah, that pretty much concludes that. And here, if I had 20 of these, I could have sold them. He had a famous ball that we use in the studio that you see me sitting in it sometimes. Everybody wanted to buy my ball. You have t-shirts and then of course they're copying the tapes over here from the conference that you can buy at the end. It's a big hall in which the speakers are talking after they get back from lunch. It's part of the painting. Isn't it beautiful? And then right over here is another one. Feel reasonable, actually. And then you can stop and get a massage all at the same time. You were laughing, you know how I am with names. Uh, and uh, you said, well, still, Lauren Coleman, how are you today? <laughs> Fine, how are you yeah. doing?
it's cold in here and so hot outside. Oh, it is? Oh, the temperatures? Yeah, and so you, your brain just sort of... Oh, okay. Well, I'm from Maine, so oh, I'm yeah. used to these different radical temperature changes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come a little closer here. Okay. Well, I'm from Washington State, so... Okay, great. We're kind of on the same weather length here. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that you write books about modern mysteries. Right. Would you be nice enough to give me a little glimpse of what it is that you do? Sure. Well, starting in 1960, I really began being interested in first the abominable snowman and then Bigfoot, and what's generally now called cryptozoology, the study of unknown animals. <laughs> And by these, we really mean everything, not just the Loch Ness monsters and, mm -hmm. and Champ and Bigfoot, but all of those little creatures that are being reported around the world. And mm -hmm. like in my book, Cryptozoology A to Z, I talk about 200 of those you know, that people are looking for, investigating, writing about, uh, interviewing eyewitnesses, looking for footprints. And uh, over the years then, I would go out, and I've been to every state in the United States but Alaska, uh, interviewing people, tracking these creatures down, looking for the local mysteries, mm -hmm. and uh, writing articles, mm -hmm. then writing books. And so, so your passion is your work? My passion is cryptozoology and unknown wonderful. mysteries, yeah. yeah. That's it's wonderful. been for 43 years now. I came across something the other day, uh, I didn't even know what it was, actually. Um, some, there were reportings of a centaur. Did I say that right? Yeah. Is that the only one I've heard of, or are there, are there, have there been other incidents? Yeah, centaur is a half body of a horse and a man. Uh -huh. a really mythical creature that I haven't really got to meet. No verifiable reports. There's mm -hmm. strange enough things out there, you mm -hmm. know, in the oceans and on mountaintops and different places that I haven't heard about centaurs. It's centaurs and dragons and mm -hmm. fairies and, and uh, zombies and vampires and werewolves mm -hmm. are really kind of out Side the sphere of cryptozoology, which right. really tries to look at unknown animals. Yeah, but I thought if I could ask anyone, it would be you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there... It came from a very reliable source, so oh. that's why but I didn't even know what it was oh, okay. uh, at the time oh, when the, the story came to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you was a speaker here today? Uh, yeah, this morning, Saturday mm -hmm. at 8.30 this morning, I talked mm -hmm. on Mysterious America. My book mm -hmm. in 1983 was Mysterious America, and then I revised it in 2001, mm -hmm. Mysterious America, the revised edition. And it's really a travelogue of me going around the country mm -hmm. looking at the Dover Demon and uh, ape-like creatures in the southwest mm -hmm. and southeast. And so uh, really a journey of mine mm -hmm. and uh, complements my new books, which are on lake monsters and Bigfoot and uh, Mothman, mm -hmm. other different special creatures within the cryptozoology. Um, and you are accessible on the internet? Yeah, I have a website, uh, laurencoleman.com, and Lauren is L-O-R-E-N, mm -hmm. C-O-L-E-M-A-N, Coleman, mm -hmm. all one word. So if anybody wanted to get books or anything, that's how they could get them. They can find out books and the links to Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. They're you know, well-known publishers like Simon Schuster yeah. and Pearview Pocket. But through the website, they can find out different articles that are breaking news, mm -hmm. as well as the link to my email, and then they can mm -hmm. talk to me. And I have everybody from 12-year-old kids who want help with a report in oh, school. Wonderful, yeah. And I really respond to everybody, as well as those that want my books or mm -hmm. people that are writing me, you know, 80-year-old people that remember the, a Bigfoot sighting mm -hmm. from 40 years ago that they want to tell somebody about. Um, I was on my way to the Museum of the Unexplained uh, in Reedsville, I'm sorry, Reed Springs, Missouri. Uh -huh. And uh, we had just came out of 14 tornadoes, so we were a little wore out. So we stopped in a little town called Forsyth. Mm -hmm. And there was a gentleman there that told us about a big sighting he had. And that he said it was the only documented case ever in Ohio. Uh, well, that's, that's not true. There's, Ohio is one of those states that has probably 50, 60 good sightings in the last really? 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, there's conferences and conventions in Ohio all the mm -hmm. time because with the Appalachia mm -hmm. right there at the 
the edge of the state, there tends to be a lot of caves, a lot of mm -hmm. abandoned housing that we're hearing reports of these creatures mm -hmm. living in. So Ohio is actually Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. And uh, Washington, Oregon. Pennsylvania, those Midwestern states have a certain kind of Bigfoot. And then out west, of course, in the Pacific Northwest, right. you have the more classic Bigfoot, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Uh, well, define classic. Classic is just the, the Bigfoot that most people think about, the mm -hmm. six and a half foot to eight foot tall Bigfoot uh, with a human-like foot, the mm -hmm. five toes all pointing uh, in the same direction as mm -hmm. opposed to in the southern part of the United States, you have what's called the skunk ape, mm -hmm. and it has a, has a foot that looks more like your hand, the typical chimp or gorilla foot. That's much different than the classic Bigfoot out west. Mm. Now, we did a show on mounds, uh -huh. and because of that, uh, it created quite an interest in giants. Mm. Is, that, is that in your category also? Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Giants are one of those words that mean different things to mm -hmm. different people. What I'm most interested in the use of the word giant is looking back at Native Canadian, Native American right. tales. Mm -hmm. and where are they using the word giant? Where are they using words that have come down to us mm -hmm. in the, that newspaper man's word, which is Sasquatch, mm -hmm. uh, a kind of an Indian name for Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Uh, but giant tales can, there are giant reports of something mm -hmm. 12 feet tall, you know, 12 to 20 feet tall. And, and that seems to be beyond what we know about Bigfoot, but there's certainly a few of those reports out there, enough of them for us to scratch our head and wonder what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you in charge of the world for one minute. What will you do? Besides creating world peace and no, no, get rid of world hunger. I would do that. I'm, you know, as a cryptozoologist, I'm still part of humanity. And that's where I would go with it because I'm definitely a humanist first. Even though humans sometimes make the worst mistakes in Bigfoot, maybe the smarter animal because they're out there not creating pollution and war. That's interesting. Wow, what a wonderful concept. Did I leave anything out that you think might be important to uh, raise the awareness of people in what it is you do? I think that one of the reasons that I write my books is because mm -hmm. there's always new questions in this phenomena, whether it's earth mysteries or looking at stone tablets or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, chasing Bigfoot or mm -hmm. wondering what's going on in our skies. I think there's so many mysteries and so many answers mm -hmm. that I really respect other authors who are trying to put mm -hmm. answers out there. And for me, it's been my way to communicate to the public. Is It's always been interested in what I'm doing and, and I'm interested in what the public has to say. Yeah. So here we are at an Earth Mystery Conference, right. and everybody here I recognize from the UFO conference. Oh, you do, uh, except me. Except you, You're yeah. Right. So, yeah. I was very happy to be invited. It's a crossover sort of area in which mm -hmm. people can actually begin to recognize that, that it's not just about UFOs or mm -hmm. crop circles, that there are other mysteries around. That's right, yeah. uh, Charles Fort, the writer from the 1920s, mm -hmm. Uh, who wrote the Book of the Damned, and by the damned he meant everything that science had excluded, is really what I've been interested in for all these years. Mm -hmm. We just got some really good uh, footage of what what is uh, what was the spook light of Joplin, Missouri. Oh, yes. Yes. Except we got as many as seven. Seven? Yeah. And they're definitely not headlights of cars. No. So because I, you know, even with cryptozoology, I really start from a skeptical point of view, looking at the possibilities of natural phenomena or human phenomena, confusing the picture. Yeah. And 80% of the time we can throw out what's going on, whether it's a spook it's light yeah. or creech, and then there's that 20% of yeah. unexplainables. Yeah, we had we had Dr. Gibbons, uh, the, the gentleman that made the spook light famous, mm -hmm. and Dr. Gilbert Jordan with us. Uh, he was nominated for a Nobel Prize in Physics. Great. And that's who was on the film crew with us, was oh. kind of awesome. That's good people but, to have. <laughs> excuse me. I think the point I'm making is, uh, like you say, it's all connected, whether it's space or earth. Or mm -hmm. it's just They're good interesting time to live in, huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been totally delightful. So I thank, thank you very much. And thank you. We will see you again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I'll take your phone number and oh, okay. it at the end of the. Oops. At the end of the screen, and thank you very much. Sure. And have a safe journey home. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, actually, I had to call um, Lauren this morning because at the Museum of Unexplained, they had um, they had a new addition. These people live close to Area 51, and they found a mummified adult cat of five inches that literally fell out of the sky. And so, uh, of course, the, the gibbons ran all over the place trying to find out what this mummified cat was doing uh, there and now at the museum. So um, Lauren being a cryptozoologist, wow, what a big word. And in conjunction with a cryptobiologist, uh, in a few weeks I can tell you how that cat got um, where it did. It just fell out of the sky. And we're going to have pictures of that. Um, the next clip we're going to is uh, more of the same, more people. Um, a short clip of um, uh, just in passing, Linda Moulton Howell and John Anthony West. We have a one hour interview with him that we share at another time. And so while we're doing the fun thing, let's go to the next clip and um, finish our, our yeah, visit. And this is real interesting because she's to, uh, do some energy work and put things in a counterclockwise mode. And so I'm just going to keep the camera on what she is attempting to do here, or maybe not attempting, she is. And then uh, we we'll, can probably talk about it later because it's very noisy here. And so how are you? I'm just fine. Okay, All so right. I'm going to concentrate on... I'm going to concentrate on your... on what you do. Well, if you can stand it, just to turn the volume down, and then we'll get back to normal in a minute. Okay. All right. Uh, the energy mug. There's different devices to be used for different purposes. Okay. Um, this is for the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or RV is also good because it, the energy will radiate about three feet in diameter. Okay, so it's good to energize the room that way to help negate the um, electromagnetic neg netic negative waves uh, that are bombard us. Um, the mug is, you can put like tap water in your mug and in two minutes it will be life-giving rather than life-draining and it will be above 6,500 bovis energy units. <clears throat> which will be uh, the, the taste will mellow out uh, it will be smoother uh, with water if you leave this water in the, the higher um, um, the, the the purity of the water is important because if you have nice pristine spring water in here you can get as high as in 12 hours if you put, keep water in here 600,000 bovis units. If you leave water in for 24 hours, you can get as much as just under a million, which means that people have gotten off coffee in the morning as a pick-me-up. They can drink a, uh, a glass of this and have energy for the day and not have any jitters. And regular tap water, like I was saying, however, it'll negate the toxins. And so even though there is chlorine in it and other additives, it will pass through the body without hurting it. Uh, I eat a lot of things out of my mug. You can have soup, uh, uh, solid foods, mm -hmm. and if you know how to use a pendulum, it's very useful because mm -hmm. you can test yeah. before. Yeah, and I want to ask you about that. Some of the, mm -hmm. some people don't object to the energy part of it, but they would the pendulum. Well, the pendulum is a tool. It really doesn't matter what you use. <clears throat> You're working with your higher self, your guides, mm -hmm. your angels, or whatever, okay? And it's and extremely useful because it will show you spin. All you have to do is put it over the energy mug, mm -hmm. and it'll start spinning. Mm -hmm. And this is in a counterclockwise direction, showing you that, yes, it's going counterclockwise. If I had a piece of food here, oh, shall I use your pack of cigarettes? Yeah, okay, I'm not going to energize your pack of mm -hmm. cigarettes. So right now we're energizing one cigarette. Uh -huh. Okay, it only takes two minutes to turn it counterclockwise, but I'm going to show you the difference. Okay, but I want to interrupt you for a minute. Yes. Uh, I had, here's mm. that the cigarette she, uh, she's talking about. No, I had just explained to a lady that she can test her food 
uh, and that's why I said that she objected to the pendulum. Okay. So we used something in lieu of and accomplish the same thing. That's why I had asked you. Okay, if you don't want pendulum, you can do kinesiology. Kinesiology, you know yeah, we know what that is. Okay, and I do it with my fingers. Right. And that's so I can do it without another person. Right. You know, um, I could ask the question, are these cigarettes going counterclockwise? Yeah. And my fingers are opening. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. So what we want to do is make them go counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. We are energizing that. That's already going counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. But to show you mm -hmm. which way these are going. And you have to do that with each, each pack? Yeah, or you can put mm -hmm. a whole carton on an energy mat because mm -hmm. it's as big as a placemat. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, you know, go come from the grocery store and stick everything on your mat. Mm -hmm. and make it go counter, have it go counterclockwise. Okay, so here we are. It's going clockwise. If I were to put this whole pack in the mug, Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's in the wrapper or not, okay? Mm -hmm. two, two minutes tops, mm -hmm. it'll go counterclockwise. Negate toxicity, mm -hmm. make it mellow as well, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, and this cigarette has been on there actually over two minutes. Mm -hmm. and Eight minutes to be exact. Mm -hmm. And we just put this over the pendulum, and yes, it, indeed, it's going counterclockwise, mm -hmm. okay? And so. later you'll do a taste test. And I see. have to, yeah. We're going to have to taste it. Yeah. But it, it's just, <coughs> now tell me, give me a little background. Um, um, is, are you a distributor? Is I'm a distributor, here? yes. Manfred? Bauer is the Bauer inventor. Is he he's inventor. German. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to make mention that. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. a master ki kinesiologist. Mm -hmm. Went to school in Germany mm -hmm. for many years to learn this. Mm -hmm. he's, extra, he's a master dowser, mm -hmm. I should say. Okay. A dowser. Mm -hmm. And you've heard of people going to Lourdes, France and mm -hmm. being healed by the waters yeah. there, okay? They cannot bottle the water. It loses the, the property. Yeah, we, we did a whole show on, okay, on that problem. Know. Yes, we have. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, what Manfred did is be, he invented a way to harness the counterclockwise molecular right. motion, okay, mm -hmm. for healing. Are you familiar with Dr. Lee Lorenzen in the clustered water? Oh, yes, I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. he's, he's one of my friends, Dr. Oh, that's, Lorenzen. That's great. Yeah. Yes. Well, see, these products will not cluster water. Mm -hmm. It simply turns it counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. All right. But if you start start out with clustered water mm -hmm. or any good type of water, mm -hmm. it's going to enhance uh, it. Uh, right. So mm -hmm. my the viewers, they are very familiar with clustered water. They've seen the pictures and everything. Yes. And so, like, you know, the program, that's why I asked you earlier, um, is, is it just another way to reprogram something and then you said no it wasn't? If you program, <clears throat> you can program water, you know, with your thoughts, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, uh, or God's blessing, mm -hmm. some type of, that's a program. Mm -hmm. Then you treat it in the mug mm -hmm. or on one of the devices, mm -hmm. okay? And yes, it will make it better. I have people mm -hmm. using magnetized water that they mm -hmm produce okay and I just got an email from someone and said you know my magnetized water is working better now mm -hmm. than because I started using mm -hmm. the products to turn it counterclockwise oh yeah and uh, the disc is very portable mm -hmm. um, now now I know you can tell me what the disc is made of but I felt it's kind of a liquid uh, so it's, it's a gel it's inside a, it's a gel. this is the all the products have mm -hmm. this gel mm -hmm. except for a couple there's a the pyramid and a a uh, food tainer, mm -hmm. which is whole 64 ounces. It's a cylinder looking mm -hmm. thing. <clears throat> and uh, it's polycarbonate. It's very sturdy. Mm -hmm. This is double paned, and the bubbles inside mean that there's gel in there. Mm -hmm. It's just air bubbles. So it's totally, you know, just the way it's made. And this can double as a pain patch. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's portable. I, um, I can travel with this, mm -hmm. even on the airlines, because I wear it as a pain patch. Mm -hmm. and the, mag the, the low magnetic arch that you have to walk through mm -hmm. will not affect it, mm -hmm. okay? However, you really don't want to place magnets on it. You want mm -hmm. to keep these things away from high electromagnetic waves, your computer. Mm -hmm. It can be in the same room as a microwave or a mm -hmm. computer or a stereo. You just don't want it right next to it because you know, you, the, the energies are, are, are mm -hmm. you want it to be pristine and not affected. And it, when anybody orders any of my products, I do give them a free audio tape as well. Mm -hmm. And a lid, which actually doesn't, doesn't come with the mug, but it's very handy. It has a mm -hmm. hole in here for a straw. 
And because it's double paint, it keeps hot foods very warm for a long time. So it's nice to have. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, and I admired your blouse, and you said you have to buy it in Florida because you live in the Midwest. I live in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake, yeah. Right, and I visit my father twice a year, mm -hmm. and the flea markets are wonderful there. Mm -hmm. They're not a bunch of junk, they're just, they're, you go into the retail stores in the flea market, and they're little cubby holes, mm -hmm. and they get their clothes from New York, and mm -hmm. they're at a great discount. And so I can't find anything that's really nice mm -hmm. at all, especially in Salt Lake, mm -hmm. <laughs> behind the dimes. Mm -hmm. So I just buy my clothes there in Florida. Cool. And, <laughs> excuse me. And so you do this full time? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm a massage therapist full time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do sites on radio station. Mm -hmm. um, and I can mention those if you want, if the wife Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. Well, for a year and a half, I've been advertising on Coast to Coast AM. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, now, just recently, I've contracted with uh, George, I mean, uh, with um, Jeff Rentz. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, Michael Dresser. Okay, He's no. going nationwide. Yeah, no. Also. Jeff Rentz uh, has links to my, my web page. So oh, there you can go. go to there. So I probably bumped into your name there somewhere, just not realizing what it is you were doing. Yes, I have a mm -hmm. banner ad with him. Okay. And it's yeah. on rotation, rotating basis, so it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to catch sometimes. Yeah. Know? And same thing with uh, the Coast to Coast site. Yeah. So. Oh, gee. So, uh, so Cheryl, who are, you, who are you as a person? As a person? Well, gosh, mm -hmm. I've lived in Salt Lake for 26 years. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm there because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm a you know, new age person, mm -hmm. so um, I've been into that since 1977. Mm -hmm. So I'm not new to this. Mm -hmm. And uh, my goal in life is to help people. Mm -hmm. I get really tickled when people call me up about mm -hmm. these energy products and say, you know, I just got my mug, uh, mug and I'm so thrilled. and. Uh, I'm going to, I want to order one for my mother and, mm -hmm. you know, give a Christmas present and things like this, you know, mm -hmm. and they order other things too because they find it so beneficial mm -hmm. for their health. They actually can feel the difference, mm -hmm. they can taste the difference with these energy products. They prove themselves. I always tell people when they have lots and lots of questions for me and they're mm -hmm. skeptical, I just say, order one, 30 day satisfaction guaranteed 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you don't like it, I have got not gotten one return since I've been selling these uh, at all. Yeah, and, uh, now I am I am not allowed to openly advertise you. That's okay, part of my contract. All right. So, um, well, okay, having said all that, now how's my cigarette doing? And then we'll get back to you, uh, to you as a person. Okay. Uh, how do you think my cigarette Your is? Your cigarette it's is finished? already turned counterclockwise and has been, you know, on, on this for quite a long time. Uh, it'll be more healthy for you. Mm -hmm. It won't make you stop smoking, but mm -hmm. it will be actually be more pleasant to smoke. Yeah, I'm not going to stop smoking. That's very important. That's right. Yeah. And but I think you'll you'll be surprised mm -hmm. when you do taste it. But there was part of the dialogue I had uh, with you because. Uh, it, it, a lot of people think we need to quit smoking. We had this conversation earlier with someone else. Almost all the speakers, almost everyone that does demanding work, we smoke. Mm -hmm. And at some of these conferences, I've seen people come in with a bodyguard. And then you step out, they have a cigarette, and here they are. Because we ground ourselves like that. I have heard that mm -hmm. before, yes. Yeah, and so, so it's important that we don't have people enter our lives that is trying to change that mm -hmm. uh, for us. Right. Or you don't need to be changed. Or about us. Well. So, so that's why right. that is a, a conscious choice that we make. Right. Mm -hmm. So with all the, without all the hope for you know. Well, it, these products will just make the cigarettes taste better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now this too was just as good. So regular colors? Yeah, and the arms. Yeah, it's the same manufacturer as this one. Mm -hmm. So, um, only now. The clothing shop. Yes, you know what we need I to do? Can. You know what I've done on my TV show mm -hmm. I was telling you about? I did an astrological fashion show. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, and I had models, I had professional models come in, mm -hmm. and we um, got the colors astrologically mm -hmm. correct. 
and um, and then I just put some prediction with it. You oh, know, what's coming cool. up, you know, for the signs and everything. Oh, so, cool. um, an astrological fashion show. Cool. I got Rob. Rod. Rod. R-O-D. Yeah. R-O-D. And um, uh, Davis. And we've been talking to each other for quite a while. Is this light too hard on you? No, it's fine. Okay. And one of the things we talked about is who you are and what you're doing. That's correct. Uh -huh. uh, I, uh, for many, many years, uh, I was, uh, my wife and I have been having uh, what is, uh, can be classified as paranormal experiences. And they first started when we first met back in 1960. Uh, and they've continued. Uh, mm -hmm. And this year has been a very, very active year for us. Mm -hmm. um, the book that I wrote, which is uh, River of Fear, River of Fear. Encounters, mm -hmm. which is book one of mm -hmm. a, a trilogy, mm -hmm. uh, is actually a blending of some true-to-life stories surrounded mm -hmm. by some mystery and action. And the reason I had uh, written this book mm -hmm. as a uh, novel rather mm -hmm. than a documentary is that I wanted people that would not normally read a paranormal book that mm -hmm. was a documentary. I wanted to reach that audience. And when they read the book, I asked them if they would send me an email afterwards mm -hmm. and identify what they think are the scenes that were the factual scenes that Elaine and I experienced. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of interesting that the people that do respond, uh, uh, they 90% of the time they missed the mark mm -hmm. and it is actually they picked a scene that uh, did not happen. The, uh, when I write back to them and let them know that uh, they, uh, they missed, missed the mark, the mark you know, yeah. and uh, when they, I ask them why mm -hmm. uh, they picked that particular scene mm -hmm. and with the people that do respond they say that it's either because there's something that happened to them mm -hmm. or uh, that's something that it was similar to happen to a friend. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so when you say miss the mark, and they are in, in agreement or it triggers them uh, with something, how can we call it off the mark? I would think that would be a hit. Well, it, it would be a hit in this respect mm -hmm. because they're, they're then saying, well, there's something in this book mm -hmm. that I can relate to that mm -hmm. happened to me, and that is a hit. So it's a hit, That's so it's correct. not missing the mark. It's it, missing the mark as to the story. The, the, oh, to the story. The, the, the actual mm -hmm. scene in the book that my wife and I uh -huh. had experienced. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's my mission, is, is to uh -huh. have uh, people read the book uh, mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden they say, gee, something like this, I did mm -hmm. experience something like this. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they kind of maybe pigeonholed it mm -hmm. and rationalized it, saying mm -hmm. that it was a figment of their imagination. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that more and more people will understand that these things are not figment of your imagination. It's very true, really yeah. Happen. Yeah. You know, I wrote a similar book, uh, but I went about it a little different than you did. Mm -hmm. And it's just weird what people relate to, but as long as they relate to something, absolutely. we did our job, didn't we? Yes, yeah. absolutely. It, and I hear you're a lot luckier with the publisher than I am. We were very fortunate, fortunate. in finding the publisher, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Uh, it, he happened to be looking for this type of book at mm -hmm. that point in time, and, uh, and everything fell into place. Mm -hmm. Writing the book, everything fell into place. I knew what I wanted to write, yeah. but I... I I surprised myself mm -hmm. in some of the things I, I put down on paper because yes, I didn't like somebody know else, it. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. And there's two more coming, you say? Yes. Uh, this River of Fear Encounters. You're gonna swing it around here and zero in on your book, and we can still hear you. And then uh, book two, which will be out in March or April of this coming mm -hmm. year, is River of Fear Pursuit. Mm -hmm. And then the following year, uh, River of Fear Escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I'm real jealous. Well, I'm not basically jealous person, but I am in this case that you, your publisher even sent you on the road and you didn't <laughs> have to do it all yourself. Tell, tell me about that. Well, they uh, uh, initialized a mm -hmm. public relations campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, they made arranged uh, for book signings mm -hmm. in uh, various bookstores. Mm -hmm. uh, they contacted newspaper, radio, mm -hmm. arranged for uh, radio interviews mm -hmm. and uh, articles to be written about me and the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything went very, very well. 
Uh, yeah. We created uh, in Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, we created a buzz, and the book, book sales are going really very well. Really very, well. Yeah. Well, maybe I shouldn't be jealous. I just wish you well because if, if we, we really deserve that. And right. Some of the things come easier to some of the friends than it does to others. So really happy for you. And when you come to the Portland, yeah. Oregon area, you said you're from Portland, Maine, huh? Very similar. The people, I could not believe, when I went to Portland, Oregon, I, I thought I was walking through the airport in Portland, Maine, because the people were so similar in the way their manner, their mannerisms and the way they dressed. I was so surprised. Well, let's let's pick that apart here, for instance. For instance. I'm strictly on words, so port. What is a port? A port can be an entry, an exit. That's true. Uh, and then you have land, so so it could be people between two places, port, land. So are you coming or are you going? <laughs> There's some people that never figure that <laughs> out. Never figure that out, yeah. Well, so that's kind of fun to get a little philosophical philosophy here. I'm, you live in Vegas, so you're just about home? Uh, yes, we're living yeah. in Las Vegas now. Uh, I, I, I'm, it's kind of a two-part. Mm -hmm. uh, we fell in love with the, mm -hmm. the West, and uh, we are also, um, it's putting me closer to some of the research that I'm doing mm -hmm. for another book. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So we are envious of that, too, because we got to go to Portland and go to the rain. You've been a delight. I met your wife. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to ask her anything. I'll come back this way in February, and please catch us right away so we can we'll we do can that. do that again in detail. Yes. And thank you very much. It's so. my pleasure. And when I'm up in uh, Oregon, and uh, we'll we'll pick a place pick that's a much more place quiet. and go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. They are all happy now. So I'm going to show you a Roadrunner. Here's a close-up of Linda Morton Hall. Lynn Buchanan. Lynn Buchanan. This is uh, John Alexander. Lynn Buchanan. Oh, Adam West. And Linda Morton Hall. From the back. And one of the waitresses. On home too. Huh? Are you going to be on TV? Yeah, well, you were on TV last time. I, oh, we I, love, we love the media. Uh, I was never uh, when, on TV, not once. Well, I was it's gone. Oh, you wasn't uh, I mean, there? I was doing yeah. something, and then, uh, maybe, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I shared you with my viewers from Laughlin when we were on the other side. Yeah. Right after the road runner. And yes, the lady I recognize, Erica. Um, I hope that was fun to you. I need to correct a couple of things. It was not Adam West. It's John Anthony West, the eat the gentleman that studied the timeline of the pyramids and uh, in the uh, Sphinx, I can say that word. So, no, it was not Adam West. And as far as uh, Rod Davis, now, some interesting happened when I edited that tape. I'd like to tell you there is, um, there is actually more to Rod than I showed you. And um, it's bit, since it is my private footage, uh, you could call me for a private viewing. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, in the coming weeks, we will um, actually next week, I believe, we're going to take you to a real nice and mellow fireside talk. And then we're going to go back to Canon de Shea and kind of mellow things out a little bit, and then we're going back to the paranormal for the rest of the year. And um, this being 2004, I want to thank you for having stuck with me, you know, to another to another season. And we'll definitely let you know if we win an award, but even if we don't, we are winners already because we have viewers like you. And again, I'd like to thank Yelm because Vivian, my camera person, she's from Yelm, so uh, we can finally incorporate it. And Bernie, you did a brilliant job as always. Thank you. I think I'm real short on time, but that's okay because I have a roadrunner taken my place. Um, 
we were outside smoking, uh, like, like we said, we did quite a bit of smoking because we had deep subjects. And I looked up and there was a road runner and I had never seen one. So he is a little, um, he's a little shaky, but he was just wonderful. And um, so I probably can never do that again. So we're gonna close with a road runner today. And then I guess you come see me next week to the fireside, a talk on the Navajo Reservation. And um, give yourself a hand. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Cool.